I've been doing uh, tech startups for a real slow minute, and um, the one thing that I've learned is the long-term value of companies mostly comes from the culture. Who are the founders? What are their values? What are their history? And the smart companies, they keep that culture front of mind because they know that it's the culture that's going to get them from where they were from where the market's going to take them in the future. And the same thing is true of cities. And luckily for uh, Detroit, are these auto advancing? Luckily for Detroit, we've got a really long history of, of culture with fantastic characters to draw from. I am a clicker goddess. <laughs> Can we back these up to the beginning? They seem to be on auto advance. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> to, to the very beginning? My time's almost up. <laughs> Great. So one of my favorite characters from Detroit's history is Chief Pontiac. He's Detroit's original badass, and he was the master of roughhousing. <laughs> Detroit, Detroit was conceived right here in this beautiful building. This is the Palace of Versailles in France. Detroit was created by a direct command from uh, Louis XIV, who wanted to create a utopia, a sort of a center of civilization where French and Indians would live together in peace and harmony. Our founder, Antoine Cadillac, arrived here on July 24, 1701, and he immediately constructed a brewery. Yep. <laughs> A windmill and uh, a fort, of course, and a church, St. Anne's, which is actually the second oldest Catholic parish in the United States of America, and it's still active over there on the border between Corktown and Mexican Town. So, a few generations later, the vision had been realized. There were French families with names like De Quinder and Livernoy and Campo and Olette who had created farms on both sides of the river, and they were joined as the vision dictated by Native Americans from the uh, Confederacy of Three Fires, the Potawatomi, the Ottawa, and the Ojibwa. And this is where Chief Pontiac was born. His father was an Ottawa, and like the baby in this photograph, his mother was an Ojibwa. Growing up in Detroit at this time was a pretty idyllic lifestyle. His best friend was a French Detroiter named Antoine Bobien. And you can imagine them dancing, playing lacrosse, and of course making a little bit of coin on the fur trade. But all this came to a stop in 1754 in a wilderness just outside of Fort Duquesne, which is modern day Pittsburgh. A group of uh, French soldiers, a small group of 30 guys, woke up in the morning and looked at this bluff. This is called Jumonville's Glen. And they saw they were surrounded by a full company of British militia. They were under the command of a very inexperienced and young colonel. And even though they were on French soil and they had French, French diplomatic papers, the Brits opened fire and eventually assassinated the commander. The leader of the British was this guy, George Washington. He had just started what came to be known as Seven Years' War. Immediately, French, I'm sorry, the British sent 2,000 soldiers to the shores of America. The French tried to, but their ship was intercepted. Back here on the shores of Detroit, people were outraged over the assassination. The French and the Indians both donned on war paint, and they danced the war dance. They left back to Fort Duquesne, and the stage was set for a massive battle. The British were showing up with 2,000 soldiers straight from Britain with lots of heavy artillery. The French only had 600, and most of these guys were Detroiters, Native Americans. During the first round of the volley, the commander of the French took a bullet to the head and died. Many of the French troops retreated back to the fort, but the Detroiters, undeterred, they persevered, and against all odds, they routed the British, who didn't stop retreating from Pittsburgh, until they got to Philadelphia. That's a long, that's a long retreat. Um, Benjamin Franklin had this to say. I'm going to paraphrase. A badass from Detroit gave us our first glimpse of the American Revolution. So Ch Chief Pontiac was decorated by the, the commander of all of New France with the royal uniform of, of a French officer. Well, the, Fran the French, they won the battle, but they lost the war. Back here at Detroit, the, the British sent a guy named Robert Rogers, who was a, the commander of the Rangers. He met Pontiac. They smoked a peace pipe, which still happens at Detroit today. And, um, <laughs> and there was a lot of mutual respect between uh, the, the two parties. Interestingly, uh, Robert Rogers is, um, was a pioneer in the... Uh, 
in Special Forces. In fact, every Ranger, whether they're Canadian or American, when they graduate from Ranger School, they're given a copy of his uh, warfare tenets, which were all drawn from Native American thinking. Things were peaceful at Detroit until this guy showed up. This is Major Henry Gladwin. He, um, he was a racist. He thought that the Indians were subhuman. He routinely called them dogs to their face, and whenever they gave him a gift of peace, he would break it or discard it. Hello? Uh, I can point it this way. Great. Okay, so he was mean to them. In the meantime, right down the St. Lawrence Seaway, uh, the British were rounding up all the French families and, and deporting them to other places. Some of them ended up in Louisiana. Up here, they were called Acadians. We know them now as Cajuns. Um, back in Detroit, the same Major Gladwin, he executed a young Indian female and left her body to dangle above the fort for days. So at this point, the French and the Indians were afraid that the British had really bad intentions for them. In Native American culture, uh, you, couldn't, you didn't order or command your warriors to battle. You had to persuade and convince them. It was a real democracy. So immediately after this, Chief Pontiac, now in his 40s, started convincing and, and, uh, and you know, making a good case. And shortly after that, a war started that was, it was now known as Pontiac's Rebellion. In the course of two months, eight forts were closed not to mention Fort, Fort Detroit and Fort Pitt were under siege. The British had just lost a whole bunch of territory under the command of this guy, another racist. He commanded the officers of Detroit to give the natives around Fort Pitt blankets infected with smallpox. Genocide, the whole thing. Um, he also sent a few hundred troops to Detroit. Rumor has it that as they arrived, they were followed by this guy. This is Lenain Rouge. Everybody know Lenain Rouge? Yeah. He's the superstar troublemaker from Detroit mythology. The next day, the Brits tried to do a surprise attack on Pontiac. It backfired. There was so much British blood spilled in the local creek that it became named the Battle of Bloody Run. Quick commercial here. This is an aside. There are some really talented people who have reinvigorated this old French tradition called the Marche de Nain Rouge. <laughs> That's right. Look into this. Support it. If we do this right, this could be to Detroit what Mardi Gras is to New Orleans. I think they're telling me they're going to kill puppies because they keep going over the limit. Back to the action, uh, Chief Pontiac. The British were sick of all this fighting. They sent uh, Chief Pontiac on this beautiful schooner from Detroit to uh, western New York to sue for peace. While he was on the boat, he was reacquainted with his old ranger friend, Robert Rogers, who, in the meantime, had written a play about Chief Pontiac. He was that impressed. Um, this was the, only the second play ever written in English uh, in North America and it only missed being first by three months. It's a really significant character from our history. Um, unfortunately, in his 50s, uh, Pontiac was killed by a Peoria assassin. The rumors at the time were that a British officer uh, paid this warrior uh, one barrel of whiskey to do the deed. So what is the legacy of Chief Pontiac? I don't think our love of freedom and democracy came from you know, reading, I'm getting emotional from reading ancient Greek uh, philosophers. I think it came from the experience of the Native Americans right here in Detroit, who, by the way, still live here. That's uh, Algonac, that's the St. Clair River. Just the other, other side from Algonac is a First Nations resort called Walpole Island, where the Potawatomi, the Ottawa, and the Ojibwa, keep the fire burning. <laughs> 